In the small town of Beth, there were many very bubbly, although slightly mischievous, children. Although they all pulled various pranks on the other townspeople, they were well liked throughout the town. Despite their popularity, their parents were beginning to take note of their failing grades. That teacher is terrible, they complained to the preacher who owned the church that functioned as a schoolhouse. Look, I'm trying my hardest. I even put word out for the position in New York City and a woman by the name of Miss Nada is on her way, he replied. The parents were very eager for Mrs. Nada's arrival. When she finally stepped off the train, the entire town greeted her with baked goods and cards they had their children make. She was very well spoken and polite. The parents had no doubt that she would make a very good teacher. In no time, the children's grades had escalated to straight A's and their demeanor had become more refined. At first, the townspeople were exuberant about their kids' new behavior. Eventually, they began to worry about their kids because even though they never pulled pranks, their actions became rather nefarious. They became extremely disrespectful to their parents and other townspeople and a few townspeople suspected Miss Nada was responsible for the children's corrupted new personalities. The town's notorious neighbor do well Samuel made claims that Miss Nada worshipped Satan and was driving the kids to hell. Samuel strongly believed that there was something way off about Miss Nada and even threatened to burn her alive like the witch she was. But... No one paid mind to him because he was such a reclusive drunk. The children were cruder and more aggressive when the winter ended. They began getting into fist fights and vandalizing town stores. The preacher began receiving more and more complaints from parents demanding Miss Nada be fired. He vehemently argued that in the time it would take him to find a replacement, the school year would be over and they had no proof to their arguments except superstition. March was drawing to a close when his wife burst through his office door. To alert him, the schoolhouse was on fire. Come quick, she shouted. Samuel's done it. He's really done it. The schoolhouse was lit on fire when the kids were in class. The preacher immediately leaped from his desk sprinting to the schoolhouse as fast as his old tired legs would allow. His nostrils filled with smoke as he attempted to enter the building to save as many kids as he could. Just before he entered the building though, his wife pulled him back and told him that he won't be able to save them. Suddenly, a devious cackling emanated from the schoolhouse followed by children laughing and singing hymns backwards. The malice-filled songs and laughter didn't end until the fire completely devoured the schoolhouse. The rescue workers sent to pick up the remains of the children and Miss Nada heard the same cackling and hymns even though the school and its inhabitants were long deceased. The remains of the children were buried in a graveyard constructed by the residents of Beth, and Miss Nada's body was encased in cement left to rot under the burnt down schoolhouse. Samuel was found stabbed to death in the middle of the forest two days after the accident. Yet, his corpse was months old. The only survivor, a boy of 10, revealed that Miss Nada sung lullabies with sinister meanings to the kids and told them that no one can tell them what to do except her and Satan. Immediately after the survivor, who was sick the day of the fire, slit his wrists and wrote, Back to school, on the wall in blood. Once a person hears Miss Nada's laughter, or her children's songs, there is no hope as they have been asked to become the newest classmate. An unrejectable offer.